Hello all, um, thank you very much for coming out to join us tonight. This is an absolute new experience um, for Council um, using this type of technology to engage in question and answer sessions. Um, and we're really sorry we can't able, we're unable to interact directly with you. Um, but unfortunately, the rules for um, COVID-19 preclude public meetings or gatherings more than 10 people. So we've had to use this technology, um, but we hope we can make this work in a way that allows you to interact with us and share with us your questions um, so that we can provide a response. This is new technology, um, and so bear with us if we haven't experienced any technical difficulties. Remember the days of the old little Kiwi running across the screen? If you get one of those, you know we are experiencing technical difficulties and we'll be back with you soon. Um, just to be important for those people that are participating, the session is being recorded, um, so you will be able to go back and hear the answers to the questions that you may have asked, but equally other people will be able to hear the questions and responses to the questions that have been asked. Um, it'll be available to view after the session, um, and it's the same link um, and by which you join tonight. So the, look, um, the way we're running this is Alex and I will run through a summary of the annual plan document. Um, we're just going to highlight the key points. Um, we've actually already had over 400 people um, submitting. So um, obviously people are engaging and are taking time to read it, which is, is absolutely fantastic from our perspective. We'll then run through a series of um, questions and answers um, that people have um, already submitted. Actually, we haven't prepared any written answers to them. We only saw them this afternoon. Um, so um, please don't feel that that's scripted. That is just literally we're going to be responding to those. And then there'll be an opportunity for people to um, push their, uh, put up their own questions, which we'll, um, we'll respond to. Um, at any time during this, this session, you will be able to submit your questions via the online tool. So if you're using a desktop computer, the question and answer panel should be on the right hand side of your screen. If it isn't visible, you may need to click on the question mark icon on your toolbar. If you're viewing the session on your phone, you can submit a question by clicking on the question mark at the top right hand corner of your screen. When asking a question, please remember to include your full name. Please try and keep your questions brief because we do have to read them. And please try not to ask a number of questions within the same paragraph or the same thing. It just literally makes it very difficult to respond to in this kind of format. We won't be accepting any anonymous questions. Um, the questions will be moderated um, for obvious reasons and then published for everyone to view. Um, please um, ask questions, not just a comment, because um, that makes it very difficult to understand what it is that the, the question is about. Please be aware there may also be a lag between the video and audio segment of our session and responses to the questions being asked. It's a factor of our technology. We'll endeavour to answer as many questions as possible in the time frame um, that we have tonight. Um, and we do sincerely apologise um, for older people or people who are not as tech savvy and unable to use the, um, the internet tools that we have. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 situation, this is what um, the only option we have, and we're really trying to make this work so we can um, we at least can engage and make sure that people have a chance to ask questions, but they're not limited to this. People, of course, can write to us um, in the old fashioned way, drop us a letter, um, equally um, ask friends to post for them um, on, on their internet and so forth. We're aiming to wrap this up in about an hour and a half, um, but we'll see how we go. Depends on the number of questions we have. Um, a summary of all the questions and answers from this evening session will be posted on our website after the event. There will be some questions we just simply um, do not have the information at hand to respond to. Um, and so we will um, be replying to those in, on, the, um, on our website um, after the event. Allow um, hand to Alex to introduce you to the annual plan consultation document. Alex. Uh, thank you, Harry. Um, so 
what I'm going to do is just um, any any questions, as Harry has mentioned, will be placed um, on the website. We do want to get to everything, uh, but we have already quite a few questions to uh, to answer. So just to give you an overview or an introduction to the document. So over the past six months, uh, we have become aware of areas within council where underinvestment has led to a less than ideal council capability and delivery. And additionally, when rates have not increased to allow these deficiencies to address, be addressed, we end up in a bit of a pickle. So pre-COVID analysis was pointing to an over 30% rate rise to begin to bring council to an acceptable level of delivery. But we accept that landscape has changed considerably in the last two months. And your council recognises and understands the pressures on its residents in an uncertain environment. So this plan will continue with our water and wastewater upgrades, our increasing of capabilities, our resolution for Greytown sports issues to be addressed, and our support of the communities. We will continue to improve our roads, our pensioner housing, and our cycleways. And we will continue to employ and engage local people and businesses without retrenchment and damaging our economy further. We have reduced our proposed rates rise to around 2.54% on average, with increased borrowing to accommodate the shortfall. What we have put forward to the public, you, I trust, you will agree is a balanced, reasonable response to these pressures in an annual plan environment, not a long term plan. And we without continuing to neglect our responsibilities and still advancing our infrastructural investment. And please bear in mind that this is not a decision by council. This is a presentation to you, the public, a plan for you to comment on via the consultation process. Full democratic processes on seeking comment from you, the public, will continue to go ahead and the public's opinion will be taken into account. So uh, go through, Harry, would you like to um, go through the consultation document? Th thank you, Alex. I just want to reiterate, this is a consultation document. We are seeking your views and your thoughts. It is a particularly challenging time for council. COVID-19 has certainly changed the way that we think about the world and the way that we experience the world. Equally, if we want to make sure our economy recovers, we still need to make sure that we're investing in those things um, that keep our communities safe, that allow our tourism, our restaurants, our businesses to flourish. So providing the basic core services of council, its infrastructure, its roads, is a key part of this plan. So starting from the top, the first and most important thing we need to invest in is safe, clean and clear water for our towns. Wellington Water undertook an audit of all of our wastewater and water, sorry, of our water supply issues. None of our water supplies are compliant with New Zealand's drinking water standards. We think this is unacceptable and the community has told us this is unacceptable. Not only from the community perspective, from the, but for those people that visit us which we want to encourage post COVID-19. So we're proposing a significant investment in upgrading our water supply. Bear in mind, this is an annual plan, not a long-term plan. So we are signaling a strong investment in heading in the long-term plan of up to $5 million to upgrade our water supply. So in the annual plan, we're doing those things that are most urgent that need to be done to make sure we're investing safely. Apart from supply, managing demand for water is a critical thing that we all need to do. So we are proposing to develop a water conservation plan with elements to it to actually help us manage the demand for water. We also need to look at our waste water services. So Wellington Water have looked at a water supply. They are currently doing an audit for wastewater we know there are some things we need to do now, particularly to progress the Featherston wastewater system, um, but also to make sure we've got checks and balances in our current processes. 
So we are working on those areas. Finally, we also need to be thinking about our water races and stormwater. Stormwater is a challenge um, for a small council like us. Um, so we're proposing to look at the hot spots, those areas that are the most urgent to resolve. Beyond simply the pipes, the roads, the places that people go are equally important. So community, the ability for our community to participate, swimming pools, libraries, services is critical, our sports grounds, our parks and reserves. So there are a couple of things here that we are asking people about. We did a trial around extending swimming pool hours we want your view as to whether we should extend that. Probably the most significant thing that is in this council's um, annual plan this year is the idea of starting to develop a sports hub and recreation hub to support Greytown. On balance, we make sure that each town has a range of services that currently meet its current and future needs. Greytown in the past has had the benefit of a trust that has invested in land and green space. The trust is now looking at an alternative ways to invest the fund, that funding that would have been available for some key green space um, inside Greytown. So we are proposing to invest in some land so that it doesn't turn to urban development and it can be used for the enjoyment of Greytown people. And that is on balance with the amount of green space that's available in other town, towns. Equally, we're looking at a gym um, to partner up with the Kuranui School so, um, um, College um, to make sure that that development doesn't simply replace the old gym, which would just meet the needs of the school, but could be used for wider use within the community and offer a real asset to the grey town. So the next area in that around the community and recreation is we do have an issue with um, deferred maintenance for a number of our buildings. As I mentioned, we do want to encourage pride in our towns. We want to make sure that when people visit it, um, the, the buildings are fresh, they're inviting and they want um, they encourage people to participate and be part of. So we do need to can make sure we're investing and bringing our houses up to the, the correct standard. Equally and probably most crucial in this plan is to make sure our housing for our older and most vulnerable people is up to standard. So we do need to make sure that we are investing in older housing for our seniors. Yes, we are proposing a very modest rent increase. Again, that's to balance the difference between what um, people pay for the services they need and what ratepayers contribute towards that. Because that we do have a deficit running in our senior housing, which ratepayers are carrying that burden. So we know people are keen to invest to support their vulnerable citizens, but it's getting the balance between making sure they pay where they can, um, and it's a very, very modest investment. It's less than a dollar um, a day. The next significant area that we need to invest in is land transport. So this is our roads, our footpaths, our cycling, all the ways that people move and around our region, um, not just the towns, but also in the rural areas as well. So we are investing, we need to maintain and most importantly, renew our assets when they are worn. So we do need to make sure that we're keeping up to date. We have fallen behind and we need to make sure that we bring things up to the standard we want, particularly if we want people to be traveling around our rural areas and experiencing the right level of safety on our roads, things like skid resistance, but equally making sure that the roads are safe and um, are consistently managed well. We also need to look at those things in and around roads, like making sure that the forestry that stabilizes some of our hillsides and the trees in around our towns and urban areas, which um, A, are very good for climate change and add amenity value to our towns. We need to make sure that we're looking after these assets as well. We do want to progress with extending footpaths um, and make sure that we are investing for the places that people walk. Equally, 
providing a balanced plan that encourages people to be active and physically healthy by walking and cycling. We don't have the answer to what that looks like, but we want to make sure that with the limited funding that we do, we're investing at the right places in the right time for walking and cycling. Again, um, the, the next two areas, um, waste. Waste is a critical thing um, that we all are aware of, and certainly the COVID-19 situation gave really highlighted the importance of when people actually didn't have the ability to dispose of waste, what that could mean. So rather than simply just add removal to um, the option, again, how do you manage the demand to try and minimise the waste that we consume every day? And there are a number of tools that the council can do to actually um, try and encourage people to minimise waste. And part of those are things of making it um, understanding the true cost of what is incurred in disposing of waste. So we are we are keen to do a lot to reduce the amount of waste we produce, and of course the climate change and carbon footprints produced by waste. In terms of planning for the future of our of our, of our district. We also need to use some of the statutory instruments we have that manage and control growth. We need to do that in a balance. So one is looking at the district plan that we currently have and making sure it's fit for purpose. So we are continuing the review of the district plan to make sure that the right um, places for people to work, live and play are balanced. Equally, we need to be thinking to the future. And certainly COVID-19 has indicated that we will have a different way that people will enjoy the way that they experience a town and what they want to do. People are a lot more conscious of the impact of tourism and its footprint, for instance, in terms of the benefit it brings financially, but equally the impact it has on some crucial, um, significant environmental resources. So we are looking at delaying the spatial plan, only short time, we're still saying we want to do it within the year. The spatial plan is the future look at where we want to go. What we're conscious of is the amount of information that's been gathered right across the community at this time about what future business, what our future economy um, and what our future social legacy will look like. And we want to take advantage of that rather than simply gathering information and asking the same people the same information. For that reason, we've also um, now applied our consideration of the Martinborough growth area sequentially. We were going to be doing it in a parallel process. A new council has wanted and challenged us to think about how do we maintain some of the significant um, features that we do have. For instance, in Martinborough as a village, how do we keep that but account for growth in a way that doesn't simply add more grid, grid pattern housing to our small towns? The final element in our resource management is also thinking about the opportunity around the Dark Sky Reserve. So the Dark Sky Reserve does require um, a change to the way that we light and manage our public places. So we are supporting the, 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 um, the establishment of the International Wild Rapid Dark Sky Reserve, but we need to look at our lighting rules. <laughs> and how those are done. And we know there will be a number of people because it is a balance. It doesn't mean that streets are going to be darker. It may mean we need more lights in different parts of streets, but the overall lighting effect has to be managed. Finally, as a chief executive um, coming into this council, um, I've had a look at the capability within our organisation and what we need to do to make it more customer focused and more easier to, um, to do business with. We do have a legacy from the old days of amalgamation where we were not investing in the systems, processes and staffing by assuming the councils would combine together. We are doing some of that through a shared services initiatives and we're doing as much as we can and we have more to go. Unfortunately, we are way behind the eight ball in terms of our systems and processes. Um, our internet is um, unable to support transactions, financial transactions, forms and so forth. Our Building Act process does not give visibility to applicants and people who are doing that work and the list goes on. So we're conscious we want to use technology to support our community so they know where their consent is up to, where their Building Act is up to, 
um, that they can transact with us at the time that they choose, not get driven by um, driven by office opening hours. So making sure that we've got those services that are, f are facing and supporting you is a critical thing for us to do. So that's an overall summary of the areas that we want to invest with and some signals about um, where we're heading into the future. So with that in mind, um, we will now move to some of the questions that people have already asked us. Um, so we will respond to some of those while we're waiting to see what the range of questions that you have, and then we'll, we'll move to those. So um, Alex, the first question, Uh-oh. How, how about that? Sorry. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to uh, um, read about half the question, uh, but you get an idea. It's quite a long question. So a critical issue for residents, businesses and visitors is to preserve those aspects of the environment and way of life that most of us value highly. How is this going to be explicitly factored into the council plans at an outcome level? So. This uh, relates back to um, a mention from Harry regarding the spatial plan and the district plan. Uh, so it's not an annual plan issue. Uh, however, the consultation uh, regarding how we treat our towns uh, will be uh, rigorous and make sure that we are factoring in all opinions and a long term view of how our communities exist um, with each other. So. That's Thank the you, first question. Um, we are experiencing a technical difficulty um, at this end, um, so we're assuming that people do have the uh, can have visibility of the questions that we're answering. Um, so, but in the interim, I'll read them out just to make sure that um, people are aware. So the um, next question that we had was around how we manage our balance sheet overall. People tend to focus on our operating costs, but we also have questions around how we move money in and out of reserves, particularly for funding um, from development contributions and uh, money that we put aside for future investment. So the question is, what are the, where are the financial accounts and figures for income and expenditure? And where is the detail of the operating shortfall that is requiring the 1.5 million loan? So the, um, just to answer that, the 1.5 million loan is essentially using some of our capital to be able to offset some of the rates impact specifically for COVID-19. It's a bit like taking an extended mortgage on your house to fund some of your operating accounts. It is shown very clearly and is um, in, our, um, in the detail of the financial reports and I would suggest the person who's asked this question um, have a good read through and if they have any further questions we'll take it from there. Alex the next question is yours. Thank you very much Harry. So it's very much in a, in a similar vein to the first question that was asked. <clears throat> it was previously decided to progress with the Martinborough growth area project before the spatial plan was completed. The commentary on the consultation document would Thanks. indicate that further okay. progress will be delayed until after the spatial has been completed. So what has been spent so far in developing this project and what expected costs associated with the Martinborough growth era have been allocated for the next financial year? So the initial scoping of the Martinborough uh, growth area was pretty much started and uh, continued with regards to stormwater to look at the viability of the growth area. That has been placed on hold I'm unsure and we will post the response as to how much has been spent on that project so far. And any decision regarding the Master Growth Area will be included into the spatial plan uh, following full consultation with the public. Thank, Thank you, Thank you Alex. So Alex, the next question is yours. Right. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, and the next two questions, actually. <laughs> Cool. So why uh, is the South Warrior District Council not freezing rates as other councils are doing? So currently um, 
I, uh, there has been one council in New Zealand that has uh, decided to freeze rates and 10 councils have signalled they may consider freezing rates. However, 66 councils, much like your council, are taking a balanced view regarding COVID and we have taken advice from Infometrics, um, which stated that a rates freeze would cripple economic recovery uh, and especially in urban and rural areas. So to that mind, what we're doing, if we froze rates, we would be delaying an issue and making it much harder over the next five years to try and recover from that. So we, were, we are not considering freezing rates this year. Um, the next question is, uh, why are we putting up rates for housing for seniors? Now, the rents are being realigned. We are aware, are aware we need to spend quite a lot of money on bringing the uh, accommodation up to standard. Uh, we have also looked at rates uh, for uh, um, senior housing through the Wairarapa, uh, and we feel that those rates that we put them up to are uh, very reasonable uh, and uh, as an attempt to have the senior housing running at a cost neutral level. Uh, so that's the reason for proposing the uh, rental increases. Uh, Harry, I'll pass over to you for the next one. Thank you. Um, we had a question around waste minimisation. Um, I think I've covered that already um, in, the, in, in my presentation earlier. In other words, we are doing as much as we can to minimise waste. Um, the question is, what can we do to assist rural ratepayers? Um, it's a good question. It's hard. It's hard to get the balance between the equity between urban and rural right, um, and it, it does involve trade-offs. But that is certainly something we're exploring. Alex, over to you. Uh, fine. Uh, so the, uh, the next question: How soon can we expect to see the water conservation measures introduced? Uh, these are actually part of the annual plan. So if the public feel we want to go down that path it will be occurring uh, over the next 12 months. Um, and this is also slightly dependent on our applications for um, government funding uh, through shovel ready projects as well. But we can't count on those, uh, but we cross our fingers that we may be able to get some assistance in those areas. Um, Harry, over to you. OK, so the question here is what are we doing to forecast growth, development and population increases? This is a crucial piece of information. We're working with, um, I mean, obviously, census figures using infometrics data. So we're getting neutral and independent advice to make sure that we are factoring in um, appropriate growth and development. Of course, the um, $60 million question is how that's going to be impacted by um, COVID-19. So watch this space. Um, the next question is mine. I always get these doozy ones. Why do rural ratepayers have to pay for footpaths and lighting that they don't use? Um, but part of this is we're a district. And so the um, we try and balance in the way that we provide our service, a balance between user pays and what it is that the general public have to pay for. Some have a direct relationship and some have an indirect relationship. Rural ratepayers, um, the part of the reasons our towns exist is our service centres for our rural community. Um, people's children go to school, people use our libraries, people come and enjoy our restaurants, um, and naturally they have to use the services we have. So it's an unbalanced decision about how to spread um, the cost for services that will be used by people. Thank you, Alex. Next one's yours. I mean, Harry, you totally lost me on the order of questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry about that. <laughs> what question were you just reading then? I was what doing number? question 21. How did you jump 20 questions? Oh, because I did turn the page. Anyway, well, I'll, I'll get, get us back on track, people. Um, so if we say no to extended swimming pool hours this year as we are concerned about rates rises, Will this be shelved forever, or can look at, can we look at this again in the future? Uh, the answer to this, Harry, even though I noted that down as yours, is yes, we can certainly relook at this uh, at any time. Uh, you know, if the financial, if our financial, either as a uh, operational cost or within the long term plan or a future annual plan. 
So it's not the door is not shut on this. Thank you. Uh, the next one is for me. Uh, I live in Carsedon. Can I make a submission on the new plan? You definitely can. Uh, uh, next one. Um, people without internet have not been able to take part in this event. Do we? I think that. Do we think that's fair? And what are we doing to make sure that the digitally disabled are able to participate in engagement? So COVID has thrown us into an area that um, the ideal consultation process perhaps has not been followed, though I'm really quite enjoying the, uh, these meetings. Um, what we have done is we've made sure that through the newspaper and through uh, as much as possible, we are making the consultation documents available and also the uh, forms to put in a submission uh, available. So as I said, we're constrained, but we feel that we've got a good balance uh, given the uh, constraints of COVID. Um, and so the next one, if water is supposed to be the most important thing for council next year, why are we spending money on projects like the sports hub and council accommodation? All the areas that we have proposed to spend money on are important and can be done concurrently. Uh, if we uh, ignored uh, some of the urgent uh, parts of the proposed annual plan, I, they would end with a much higher cost to us in the future. So there's no, as I may have mentioned previously, there are no vanity projects here. These are reactions to urgent issues that must be addressed. Uh, and Harry, I'll pass over to you for question 10. And so this question is, there's a lot of support for the Dark Sky Initiative and the money it'll bring in for tourism. But how will we stop the South Bay Rapid turning into another Tekapo that is overrun with tourists and it hasn't got enough infrastructure for them? Does it mean more Airbnbs? Look, I touched on this. We're very conscious of this. Um, certainly the Dark Sky Initiative has a wonderful benefit to our tourism sector because it smooths the peaks that we have over summer with also winter um, um, tourism opportunities, but we need to do that in a balanced way. We need to make sure that um, the services are available, but more importantly, we're planning the locations where people can interact um, with the night sky. Um, the next one um, is actually linked to the same thing um, to a degree. There's no mention of climate change in the consultation document. Is the council doing in this space? Uh, yes, we are. This is certainly something um, that will be a matter for the long term plan, but in the annual plan, there's no specific allocation other than everything we're doing. So part of the reason um, Council has adopted a climate change strategy, we did mention certainly in our um, waste minimisation, the actions the Council have taken to reduce paper, similarly with waste, um, we are also doing work Part of the design of things like our Featherston wastewater system is realising the contribution from methane um, to um, from, from aerobic pond systems. We're taking those things into account. So it's part of everything that we do. The next question, how is the council working with Māori and Ngā iwi? Um, so um, council has and has a, a structured response to working with Māori in our in mana whenua in our area. We have a Māori standing committee that is a, represents Hapu, um, Marae and um, representatives from our major iwi who give guidance to Council on our policies, plans and how we work. Well, the next one's me as well. Um, so this is a question about walk, um, cycling the district. Um, so it's great to see that people are looking at making sure that we do have safe pathways for cycling. So this question is, before we promote more cycling in the district, we need to provide safe pathways for cycling. Our roads are too narrow and are even and our bridges are very narrow. Well, plans are there for providing more cycleways in the district. So in my introduction, I said, yes, we do need to have a plan. We need to be thinking about all these things. Um, there's only so much we can invest, and we need sure we're investing it in the right places in the right way at the right time. So this is very much on our agenda. Alex. So the next question, one of the key components of the proposed sports hub is the, is the coronary gym. 
that there's a perfectly good stadium in Featherston that is underutilized. Why should our rates go towards providing yet another facility? Well, the Kurunui Gym uh, is, is services uh, and is intended to service um, residents from all over the, the South Wairarapa, uh, from, uh, from Featherston and uh, Martinborough and Rural. But also we need to plan for the growth uh, of what our expectations are on sporting needs uh, within, uh, within the entire South Wairarapa. Uh, there's a number of people from other towns do use sporting facilities in Greytown. And with the extension of a number of um, uh, housing projects by the previous council within Greytown, we are looking at a, a shortfall of sporting land within Greytown. Uh, so we've just got to look at what services we offer to different groups in different towns. Uh, so it's a it's a tricky it's a tricky and a difficult uh, topic uh, to know that we are fulfilling. But we certainly we see the shortage in Greytown. Over to you, Harry. Okay. Um, now, given time, um, we're waiting to see how many questions we have from you, and we're now going to move on to those questions. Um, so we actually have a, a series of questions from Daphne. Thank you, Daphne. Um, some of your questions are quite long, um, and have a number of questions inside each of them. Um, so the, the first question um, is, uh, I, I won't read it, I'm assuming it is visible to people to see. Okay, right, thank you. Um, so the, the, the matter that is alluded to in, in this question that, I re, that I'm re, referenced to refer to was of the importance of making sure the council has all options in front of it when it makes decisions. The precursor to that is consultation. So making sure that people do have all the information in front of them to make the decisions they need um, and that they put their views to council. So the question around is the consultation a yes, no, um, the, 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 the form of consultation is to encourage as many ways that people can um, write to us, put their views. It is not a yes, no answer. We're simply looking for as much information to see what it is the community generally thinks around the options that we're consulting on. Um, so the long term issue is making sure that we have secure recreation space in Greytown. Um, this is the first step. It is not the final part of the answer. Um, so we look forward to your views. Thank you. Uh, would you like me to answer the next question? Yes, Harry? that would be great. Thank <laughs> you, Alex. So from, uh, from Duncan Ryman, are there funds available in the South Wales District Council accounts uh, for the Green Space Fund? Uh, the, the answer for this is yes, there are, and these have been taken into account with regards to our, out, our expected outgoings uh, or the plan that we have in place. The exact amount of that, I'm not sure, are they in the consultation document? Um, if they're not, we will publish those uh, with the answers to all questions from tonight. Harry, did you have a question, a comment on that? Um, yeah, the question is, we do have reserves and um, they're paid mm. for by development, but they certainly don't go the full way in terms of funding um, the amount of capital we need to purchase um, land in Greytown. The problem is the land in Greytown is escalating at a rate. Um, and so we need to find a way, we've found a way that we can fund this um, that uses a mixture of um, loan funding and invest and the um, use of the reserves, which doesn't take out all the money out of the reserve and protect it for future use. I think we could also answer Nathan Fenwick's question at the same time, since we're on that same topic, as to why we're looking to buy these uh, when it's owned by the, by the people of Greytown. Um, the problem we have is that the current owner is requesting market rates and no club uh, can afford that. And we are providing clubs with non-market rates throughout the rest of the South Wairarapa. So in order to secure those clubs uh, and also the recreational space that they are sitting on for the people of the South Wairarapa, we now have to look at a purchase option. Um, in the numbers that we have put forward in the annual plan are a worst case scenario. Uh, because if we put in lower numbers and we had to pay more, we'd have to reconsult. 
so how this plays out with regards to the purchase and actual values, what we've put in there is a worst case scenario. Uh, over to you. Over to you. Right. Um, so um, we'll have to, uh, the, the water supply, so there's a question from Daphne, water supply of 5 million is long term funding, what is allocated in the annual plan? Um, so the annual plan, we are consulting with you on the types of work that's done in there, and that will size determine how much we actually invest. Um, Council has already agreed to 500k capital, and um, we do have figures that they are specified, and we will put those up in the answer tomorrow. I just don't have them on the top of my head right now. All right, Harry, do you want to do the? Uh, where are we up to on this? Um, we're down, but I think we're on to the next Daphne Geisler one, are we? If, um, I've answered that one on water supply. Okay, so we're on to the swimming pool issue at 28,000. Uh, why has no number been put onto the resource area, on all the resource area? I'm quite not, Harry, do not answer that one? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, so again, um, we need to be able to size the type of work we need to do. We currently know exactly what the cost for um, the swimming pool is because we've been trialling it, so we know exactly what it is. Um, we've made estimates for the other three areas. Um, we also expend, um, we know exactly what the district plan is. We'll post those numbers up tomorrow. And I can answer um, uh, the one regarding water storage for new buildings. Water storage, for, uh, I think there may have been a bit of confusion there. We are looking at changing the district plan to require new buildings uh, to uh, have water storage as part of the building consent. I think you'd agree that's, that's where we're um, uh, coming through. However, we have some initiatives where we are trying to either subsidise or partially fund uh, water storage for either existing or new buildings until those regulations come through. So we want to be proactive, and actually this is also one of the shovel ready projects we've requested for funding from the government. So it's a it's a initiative of two parts. And Harry, do you want to do the last question there regarding wrapping of the Marpa growth area? Um, so so the so first of all, um, we are trying to bring the Martinborough growth grab, uh, Martinborough growth area, Martinborough growth area into a sequence with a spatial plan. So we need to be looking at the spatial plan first to allocate where it is that people aspire to live, work, play. Um, so we want to do that in a sequence rather than running them in parallel. Is that all the questions there? Or? Two more. So, um, sorry, we're just trying to read from the, from the board at the same time. Um, so, we have another question from Daphne. Um, so, the um, this relates to the comment that the mayor made in his opening remark, where we have taken the costs the council needs to operate, and we are funding them from our capital by adjusting our loan our balance sheet by 1.5 million. That in turn leads to a 2.4% increase for rate payers. That's an average. Bear in mind, um, rural rate payers actually go down um, less than that. Um, and the out years will be 1.5% impact. I mean, the rest is a comment um, rather than a question. So is that the final questions? OK, so um, we do have a bit more time. So um, we'll go on with some of the other questions that people have um, raised, just to give you a sense of what it is that people are um, asking us about. Um, so where are we up to? Are we up to number 15, Harry? Yeah. So the question here is, how do you ensure that extra money spent on the council will improve services rather than more bureaucracy? Um, it is a sad fact that bureaucracy is an inevitable um, evil. 
Um, there are things, unfortunately, that um, I and the staff would love to change, but that we are creatures of statute. For instance, um, there are aspects of the liquor licensing, builder control functions that we, we are required to do, and we have to, we simply must follow the rules in doing those things. The areas that we do really want to improve is making those visible and understandable to people. As an example, I mentioned um, our building um, act control. Currently, the only way that a, uh, uh, an applicant can find out where his building control or her building, um, building application is, is by phoning council and asking us. We want to make that visible through providing a computer system where all our system and decision making and the stage of the process are highly visible. So our element is in making sure that people can see and understand what um, what we're doing and we're more transparent in the way we do that because our technology currently doesn't allow us to do that. So our priority areas are those that improve our customer service. Um, the next question that we had, um, very relevant to Martinborough, um, so the question was when are you going to move the Martinborough boars from being in the middle of a dairy farm? So people um, will be aware that the, um, the manganese plant that we're putting in um, to make sure the water is clear is only a temporary solution and we're only doing that um, and we've signed and making sure that that will be um, only available in its temporary form for five years. So we are working, um, we'll be starting this year and next year to actually identify how we actually co-locate new water supply um, options how we locate our treatment facilities and our manganese um, treatment, which is again, is part of the long-term plan. Um, of course, there's significant cost to bringing all those services together. <coughs> there's a question here. Um, why are we putting up fees for building an RMA consents? Shouldn't you be encouraging more development to get the economy going? So the increases are very, very modest. Um, actually, a number of the high-end development costs are frozen. Um, they're not an increase, um, and there are at least one or two that have gone down. But the most important thing here is it's a balance between what the ratepayer should pay for and the private benefit that is, to, that is gained from the developer. Because the converse is we have a fixed cost for providing um, our consent and building control services. It's not variable. And so if the um, user doesn't pay for the service, then the public do via their rates. So we've got to strike that balance between making sure that the, um, the person who benefits um, from the development pays their share um, rather than the rate payer. I think part of that, Harry, is also alignment with other councils and their fees. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, 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 we're, a yeah. level playing field throughout the right enough. Yeah. The next question is, how do you make sure that the Kurunui College Gym will be available for the community and other sports? The school uses it a lot after hours and it's unlikely that people want to play sports at 7pm at night. The, um, there are a number of examples throughout the Wellington region where there has been a public-private partnership with regards to gyms. I have visited one and it, um, it's been running in a collaborative format uh, for at least 10 years uh, and all the que all the problems that you might see from that have been ironed out and we can use that as an example. So it is a, a possible uh, to have this done. Uh, it's just being organised and uh, working with the school in a collaborative manner. Um, the next one, uh, are the plans to build a new mountain bike park in this year's annual plan and how is it progressing? I think this is still under investigation. Uh, it's not specifically mentioned in our annual plan. Uh, you can certainly uh, add a submission on, on this point, uh, but I think uh, there's a, a few twists and turns around whether or not we should be purchasing land for that or whether it's a public-private partnership. 